Hi, Tom Alsop here from tpatennis.com. Today I'm going to talk about the one-handed backhand and go into some detail about what I do as a coach to help my players to have a technically sound stroke. My first focus and challenge is to see if I can get this player to feel as strong and as comfortable hitting with one hand as they would if they were hitting with two hands on the racket. So the grip is going to be important for this and you need to make sure that your hand is behind the racket at the point of contact. So if you were to push against something, you would feel that your hand is in a great position to apply pressure to whatever you're pushing against. If you had a continental grip, you would see how my wrist here is on top of the racket and it's very hard to get that kind of leverage. If you went a little bit too western and your hand was underneath the racket, you would probably feel good if it was head height, but anything lower Again, your hand might not feel like it's behind the racket unless you really manipulate your body to get into some funky positions. But here you can see Rohan has something like a semi-western grip. We've not really got into a lot of detail. I can see that as he's hitting, his hand's behind the racket, nothing too extreme. And that's going to help him to have a very solid connection as he strikes that tennis ball. The next important aspect is understanding how to use your wrist effectively. If you watch me hitting some balls here, and I don't normally use a one-handed backhand, but you can see how little wrist I use, and that really helps me to not have a lot of moving parts. If I line it up, I get it out the middle of my racket, it's a solid shot. But in order for me to be at that next level, I need to be able to use my wrist a little bit to deal with those high balls and to deal with other difficult situations. You may have seen coaches draw up the comparison that hitting a one-handed backhand is like throwing a frisbee. And if you watch Roger Federer hitting some one-handed backhand, you will see that's not a bad analogy. But if you watch him return a really fast serve, it won't look anything like throwing a frisbee because he's having to keep that wrist a lot more firm just to guarantee that he has a solid connection. So if you want a practical one-handed backhand that works in a lot of different situations, you have to learn how to regulate that wrist, learn how to keep it solid, and learn when to roll it. To develop this skill, I had Rohan give me a number out of four for how much he was using his wrist. So if he pulled out one, that was for a Two. ball that was coming really fast and deep. He didn't have a lot of time. He's gonna keep that solid. Two. Two's a little bit more. Three's a full swing. One. And four's where he's having a little bit of fun and just letting it go. Two. And obviously I mean, he has three. to make Sorry. a decision on when to use each of those shots Two. based on the situation that he found himself in. One. Something that's very important to allow you to have a clean stroke where there's not a lot to go wrong, a lot of margin for error, is to make sure that the racket is not deviating too much as you make contact with the ball. So we don't want the strings to start facing the sky like you can see in this video here or coming over the top of the ball too quick. We want to just maintain that nice clean connection as we go through the ball where the strings don't move too much. They will turn a little bit to the right as you go through the shot, but they're not going to start facing the sky unless you just decide you want to push the ball up into the sky like he does here in a defensive position then that's fine just to push it up into the sky. But if you're in a good position, just try and get used to keeping the strings, you know, straight at the ball, not having them deviate too much, and you'll find that you have a very clean connection where, again, there's not a lot to go wrong. What's great about this technique is you do have to use a little bit of your wrist and your shoulder to maintain that racket angle as you follow through the ball. So that's going to really help you to start being able to manipulate that ball and to handle different shots in awkward situations but you're not going to be using so much wrist that you feel weak and unstable which again is going to be a really important aspect when you're trying to develop a good one-handed backhand the last thing i want to talk about is how rohan does a great job to often point that front foot down court so that he can pivot his hips around that front leg to give himself extra power so by using your hips you can coil and then uncoil into the shot. So a lot of people think you stay sideways, but you really shouldn't and you really won't if you hit a great one-handed backhand. If you watch Roger Federer here, you will see that you can't see his left hip. And then as he goes to swing, his hips turn and that gives him a lot of power through the hip. Now it is important that you keep your left shoulder back as you swing your right arm forwards. That's gonna allow you to involve your shoulders and to feel the power across your chest 
And if you don't do that, especially when you're starting out, for example, Rohan here, when he wasn't using that left arm, he was rotating a little bit too soon and the racket was sliding across the ball. But it's really not a sideways shot. You can see Roger Federer here, how he's turning into the ball and he's not fully sideways. So this is a myth that a lot of people talk about, about the one-hand backhand being sideways, but make sure you use your hips a little bit to turn into the shot, but then use your shoulders to stay strong throughout the hit. So to wrap this up, I just want you to notice Roger Federer's backhand here. He's throwing that frisbee. He's really letting that wrist go. And this is a video clip from a few years ago. If you look at his more recent backhands, he's actually made a technical adjustment, especially if we look at how he played Nadal in that 2017 Australian Open. He's not letting his wrist go quite so much. He's hitting it a little bit more solid, like him getting Rohan to do. And what that's allowed him to do is take it a little bit earlier, hit it a little bit cleaner, a little bit more solid, maybe take some time away from his opponents. So that technical adjustment has really changed the way he's approaching his backhand now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like me to help you with your game, please contact me through tpatennis.com and we can do some video analysis. Thanks for watching.